Hello there, this is City Scrapper. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel today. I am very excited to tell you that I was asked to join the A Punched Out Thursday to Die For collaboration. I am so honored to be joining Kathy, Ronnie, Sonia, Dorothy, and Rebecca for this weekly collaboration in which we use our punches and dies to create a layout. For this very first layout, I use a technique that I've used in the past that I really enjoy. I use Martha Stewart and EK Success border punches, and I punched out a whole bunch of strips, and the collection that I'm using is the Brenda Walton K & Company collection called Peppermint Twist. This is an extremely old collection that I really love that I have been hoarding for quite some time, and I use a lot of the scraps that I had in the collection and I am using a piece of white cardstock. I put some adhesive on it and then I began layering those strips. I start at the bottom so that the paper will layer correctly and I'm trying to decide which colors and patterns I think look the best next to each other. As I was layering these pieces, I realized that it probably would have been a little easier had I left a little bit more paper above the punched area. I cut some of the strips very thin, and then when I layered a piece that had openings in it on top of a very thin piece, instead of seeing the pattern paper through those openings, you could see the background white paper. I hope that that makes sense. So I ended up being able to figure it out, but it again, would have been easier had I made the strips a little bit wider. Originally, I was going to put these strips of paper as they were on the background, just maybe cutting them back in a regular pattern. But I was thinking that they would take up the majority of the background. And then I was thinking about a layout that I made last year in which I had a cut file that was a Christmas tree. And I layered some strips behind it in the same way, and I thought that that would look very pretty. Now, I was at a crop, and I did not have access to my die cutting machine, so I decided that I was just going to cut a large triangle and then a rectangle at the bottom, and I would layer that on top of the strips of paper, and then that would create a Christmas tree. I did have to add a few more strips of paper to the top. And unfortunately, since I didn't plan on making a Christmas tree, I made a lot of those strips far longer than I needed them to be. But that's okay. I was really feeling this Christmas tree idea, so I went with it. And I'm very sorry about the lighting. It seems to get very bright at times. I don't know why that happens, because there was no fluctuation in the lighting where I was as I was uh, filming this. But I, I did want to apologize for the fact that the lighting isn't ideal. So I finished layering some of the pieces at the top to fill in that triangle. And then when I put the Christmas tree cut out on top of the strips of paper, there was something I didn't like about the strip at the bottom. I just didn't like the way it was layered in there. So I replaced it with a different strip. And then I was thinking that I wanted a dark color at the very top. So I replaced one of the strips with a dark green color. And then I attached down that cutout and then off camera, I trim some of those strips back. Now I'm going to make a border for my layout and I just cut four thin pieces of red paper and I'm going to make a little frame. I do this all the time. This is one way that I conserve paper. I cut four strips of pattern paper and two of them I leave whole and two of them I fold the corners down on both sides and make 45 degree angles. And then I layer those pieces on top of the other pieces and it looks like a little frame. And that just adds a little bit of color to the background. There's a lot more white in this background than I'm used to on my layouts. And it was a little hard for me to not add something else to the layout, but I decided that the tree was very ornate and I did add a few more clusters, which you'll see in a bit. And I decided to just leave the background white. I did ink the edges of this paper though with some Distress Oxide in mowed lawn. Now I'm attaching down the paper that has the tree on it to the background paper that has the frame on it. And I'm being very careful to center it correctly. And then I press it down. 
This is a photo of my older daughter, Danielle. I whisk that away very quickly, but you'll see it again in a few moments. I have some pattern paper and I am distressing the edges and I'm going to be layering those behind the photo. I distressed the edges and they were white and then I added some mowed lawn and then I was thinking that I want to bring back some of the white so I distressed the edges again a little bit more. I wanted the edges to be green but then I also wanted them to be white but I ended up liking the way that looks. So I attach my photo down to first the red and then the green paper and I've already mounted my photo on some white cardstock. I wanted to add a little bit of pink to the papers that are layered behind the photo. So at first I ripped this piece of paper and then I decided that I didn't like that look. I just wanted to have another piece of paper that was pink behind the photo. So I cut out an L-shaped piece of paper and I'm again distressing the edges and then inking the edges with the mowed lawn distress oxide and I attach that down and now I have completed the layering process. I'm also going to add some photo corners, although in the end you really don't see the photo corners because I layer some items on top of the photo. But right now I don't know that I'm going to be doing that, so I cut out some photo corners and I ink the edges and I attach them down to the photo and I'm just putting them in two of the corners. And the photo corner punch is an EK success punch. Now I'm using two different Holly punches. One is a Martha Stewart punch and one is a McGill punch. And one of the holly branches, I guess I could say, has three leaves and one has two leaves. So I cut out a few of each. And now I'm using some forest moss to ink the edges. I wanted a little bit of a darker color than the mowed lawn. And again, that's a distress oxide. I'm using some adhesive and I'm attaching those holly leaves down to those two corners that I have the photo corners on. Now I'm using some Queen and Company self-adhesive pearls in red and I'm using those to look like holly berries. At first I tried using different sizes of the pearls, but once I put them down, I realized that I liked the smallest size and so I replace the larger pearls with the smaller ones. Now I am going to be making some poinsettias and I again apologize for the light. I used a Spellbinders die set that I just bought called Christmas Blooms and in that set there were a number of different poinsettias. I cut out leaves in three different sizes and I'm going to be assembling them in two different ways. On the top, I am layering the largest, the medium, and the smallest uh, of the die cuts that I cut out. And then I'm also making some of them that are just two medium flowers layered together. Once I have all of the flowers made, I am using some self-adhesive pearls. I put a little bit of glue just to make sure that they stick down, and I attach that to the center of each of the poinsettias. Now, I didn't have any letter dies with me, so I had to use a sticker for my title. This is a Simple Stories sticker, and I also included a heart that was in this set. It's a set of foam stickers, so I'm going to be calling this layout Mary. And now I'm taking those poinsettias, and I am arranging them around the tree. Whenever I'm die cutting branches or leaves or flowers I always try to make extra and it's funny I never end up with any extras I always end up putting them all on the layout so I put a lot of the flowers on the tree and then I like to add elements from the layout to the title I don't want the title to look so different from the rest of the layout so I took two of the poinsettias behind the title and then the one on the bottom I place it between those two R's. You can still read the title, but I like the fact that it overlaps the title a little bit on top. I wanted to add a little bit more decoration to the tree, so I'm using some self-adhesive pearls. I'm using these Eyelet Outlet pearls right now. These are pink pearls, so I add some of the pink pearls not only to the Christmas tree, but I add one also to that checkered heart 
that's over the title. And then I use some more of those red pearls and I am placing those on the Christmas tree. I am also going to be adding some of the smaller red pearls to the title or to the area where the title is. Again, to tie the layout and the title together. And then I got some slightly larger white pearls and I'm adding those to the tree. I was a little worried that I was over embellishing the tree, but I don't know. I think that it's really hard to over decorate a Christmas tree. So I just kept adding the pearls and the poinsettias. And then I glued all the poinsettias down. I'm using some gel glue. And then I decided that I wanted to add some more holly leaves. And this time I wanted to add them to the tree and to the title. So I use those same two punches I used before. And instead of using a paper from the collection because I was running out of green pattern paper, I got a piece of green paper from the giveaway table at the crop. And I thought that this color went perfectly with the collection. And I use again, the forest moss to ink the edges of these holly leaves. And now I'm tucking them in behind the poinsettias. I realized that the two different sides of this green piece of paper were two slightly different colors of green. So I liked that variation and I tried to evenly spread out the two different colors across the layout. And I also varied the number of leaves that I put behind each poinsettia. Some have two, some have three, some have four. And then I also put the holly leaves behind the poinsettias that are up by the title. I wish they still made a lot of these punches that they made years ago. I guess if you're buying punches like this, you're probably buying them secondhand. And I did pay up a little bit for these holly leaf punches, but they're really worth it because I get a lot of use out of them when I'm making Christmas layouts. Usually I like a bargain, but every now and then it's worth it to get something that you really want, I think. I had run out of the larger poinsettia leaves and I had a bunch of the very, very tiny ones left over because that die punched out two at a time. So I decided that I wanted to add those to the layout as well. So I spread them around the tree and then I also put two up on top of the title. And then I added a little bit of sparkly bling. It's a clear jewel to the center of each of those little tiny poinsettia leaves. And those jewels are so tiny, they were a little bit hard to manipulate, but I was able to get them into place. I added a few more holly leaves to the layout. You could see that I was inking the edges and I glue them down. And then I was thinking that the layout looked a little unbalanced because I had so much in the upper left-hand corner and I wanted at least a little something in the lower right-hand corner. And I wanted it to match the other areas of the layout. So I'm trying to use the same elements. I'm using poinsettias with pearls in the middle. I'm using the holly leaves. And I put the larger of the poinsettias on the bottom and the smaller one on the top. I always feel like that looks the most balanced. And then I added a couple of those red pearls as well, just to make sure I have all the elements in that cluster. And then once I got home, I was thinking that the tree looked like it was floating. So I just used one of those strips that I had. It was already punched out and I just put it underneath the tree just so that it would anchor it a little bit. I added a bling star to the top of the tree and then I used some of my Dr. PH Martin's bleed proof white and I touched up a few spots on the layout. And that was the last touch that completes this layout. Here are some close-ups. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for bearing with me through those lighting issues. I am so honored to be part of this collaboration. Please take a look in the description box. You'll find links to the channels of all of the other A Punched Out Thursday to Die For participants. And I hope that everybody has a fantastic day and I will see you again next Thursday for another Punched Out Thursday to Die For. Thank you so much, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye. <music>